Hello, we are recording now. We have gathered here today uh, to make a video for a pure win-win. So we get a uh, writing corner chat and also while we do that we will be providing uh, some useful information for Rebecca. I will show her blog on screen now. Uh, Rebecca, aka Fantas Fantasist95. So she is doing a review on Seeker, and uh, and uh, sometimes she does interviews with authors in this blog. Okay, I'm scrolling now. So let's see book reviews, author interviews. And uh, and we are trying out this new format now, where we talk, and she can use it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And oh, uh, I admit that we are we are both a little bit slow today. Uh, last night I went to my countryside village council Christmas dinner. There was a lot of food. I am still under the influence. <laughs> <laughs> However, I am also going to open up the talking points that Rebecca gave us. And uh, here's how I envision it working. I will read the question and then Nux, I will give you uh, the first <laughs> word. <laughs> because if I start answering at first, uh, you might not get the words each <laughs> so. so good. So, first question. How did you guys meet? Well, how did uh, you meet? This, we, I, we do stuff on YouTube, like we used to, well, we, we've, ah, look, I'm you, fumbling. But you tell, you tell your side, I will tell my side. Okay. Well, I, I used to play games for YouTube. I still kind of do occasionally when I'm in the mood. And uh, you commented on a couple of those videos, like Primordia, I think it was. And then I commented on some of your videos. There was a back and forth. And uh, then I sort of... Uh, it was a sort of invitation to the forum, I think, at first. And then you came over and got involved in some of the material there. And then we started working on Seeker together. That about sums it up. Yeah. Basically, it is all uh, Wormwood Studios' fault. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank you. I, thi I think it was. Uh, I I think it was uh, 2014 when uh, Primordia came out, or or 13 even. I don't remember. Anyway. Uh, I was playing Primordia, and I was uh, recording my play, and I think uh, some devs or artists from Wormwood Studios would uh, uh, would like and comment on people who and and subscribe to people who were uh, uh, who made let's plays of Primordia, and I I would start uh, checking those other other playthroughs out, and yours was one of those. Even though it was only only of the demo, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't remember why, but I think I commented on some of those videos. Yeah. And maybe oh, and and then uh, there were some new Vegas videos from you that yeah. I commented on. I remember Camp McCarran was Camp McDoodad. Mm -hmm. uh, and sing and singularity as well. I think there was a lot of comment. Although that came a lot later, I think. Singularity came later. Yeah. Mm. So so yeah, basically the uh, the obvious parties to to blame on this are <laughs> Wormwood Studios and Obsidian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Legend. And YouTube. <laughs> yeah. YouTube comments are to blame. Mm hmm Always. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, uh, from from then on, I remember that you brought up the 
uh, the forums and I checked in and I read some of the some of some of the storylines that were going on, and yeah, I, I think it, it it had to be before two thousand fourteen because uh, I think at some point during two thousand fourteen, uh, you already finished uh, Seeker's first draft, and uh, and I started reading it. And I was like immediately like reading mm -hmm. this makes me angry. <laughs> 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 and, Which uh, is a common theme. Yeah. If we're and uh, <laughs> and uh, this this uh, this is now a little bit tangential. This is like uh, touches on the work process and editing and planning and drafts and all that. But basically, the first that attempts to collaborate and uh, and to edit anything were immediately like starting from the wrong end like trying to copy edit a thing that knowing what we know now or, or using the vocabulary that we have now was uh, was a first draft that would actually have uh, very obviously needed developmental edit which mm -hmm. is which, which is what sort of organically developed from there but it started with, oh, let me fix your sentences. <laughs> I don't, I don't think uh, in the beginning we never planned it to go as far. Like we never planned it to be as big a job nah. as it turned out being. Nah. But it was, it was cool because I think we got through a lot, right? We, mm -hmm. we worked out a lot of how one another works and that kind of thing. And also. One of the fondest memories I'm ever going to have in my life is when I drove the super bus to Estonia and we we chilled out for the time there and you know really had a good time. So that that was cool. I mean, uh, uh, little bits from that, like where you where we were talking about the fight scene, uh, Jules fight scene, <laughs> and and this, and this is this is one of the things that I always go back to. It's like oh. Uh, I thought I'd written the absolute best fight scene in the universe, and then <laughs> you sort of you, you sort of tore it to pieces and made it uh, like uh, understandable, easier to follow, and you know. But you actually went out and you picked up twigs and you were trying to do the moves and stuff like that, and that's always going to stick with me because I never bothered to do any of that. <laughs> I was like, all right, fight scene, right? Let's throw some punches and nightsticks, and oh, isn't this awesome? But you actually went out and actually tried to do the motions to see if they would work. And I never considered doing that, but that's always going to stick with me. It's like, oh yeah, that's an awesome thing. Like, I, that's really getting into it. So stuff like that, it brought around stuff like that. So it, I'm, I'm glad it happened. <laughs> yes. Meanwhile, I am showing our a humble little forum on screen. Hmm. Uh, so right now, this is the view that one would get when they are logged in. And um. I'm just, I'm just showing the general picture. This is uh, ongoing stores workshop. No, ordinary news. No. Yeah, we have uh, we have organized the forum structure so much uh, in the last few years that I I can no longer show the things that I saw when I first popped in. <laughs> but yeah, basically there there were a lot of these uh, uh, writing threads where you would get uh, where you would get uh, alternating posts from different people and and with those it was also the, the thing that you read it and it's interesting but you're also getting angry because certain things uh, seem to be just plain stupid. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, I want to take part in this, but I need to fix this, <laughs> fix all everything all the time. <laughs> and uh, now I'm showing uh, deja vu uh, forum uh, thing, which is the the first ever story thread that I participated in, and this is the uh, story thread that we have now cleaned up and uh, made into the form leakage project.
which I'm also showing on screen now. So some of this material is now uh, open for public eyes. It's been it's been cleaned up a little bit. Uh, some of the bits we have I don't know adapted to uh, to compensate uh, for the changes in in the world building and in the understanding of yeah we are no longer claiming this we are instead claiming that or uh, yeah these things are now related to those other things etc 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 so so certain certain uh, adaptations needed to be made and we are not including all of the material uh, in these posts but the sort of let's say the the <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> so, point number two. How long has Chaos Nova been in the making? And she would appreciate if I could discuss, the, if we could discuss the origins of the universe. Well, Ooh. this this one's definitely a question for you. Yeah. Uh it it goes back some um i i couldn't i probably couldn't tell you the exact year i want to say around 2004 2005 possibly i don't know me and kyote uh, a good friend of mine we were on a forum called ajje and they were like a sci-fi serenity role play forum um but we um we left to, and ended up starting our own um, forum called serenityrp.comforums.com and uh, for a while we wrote stories within the Joss Whedon Serenity Firefly universe and we were okay with that for a little while but then we started going a bit more outlandish with our characters and our plots and stuff like that and the, I think the, the the quote you used at the beginning of the Taken Flight excerpt was something like, the universe that was could no longer contain our thoughts, there were so many, or something like that. Um, it, it was really think, nice. Yeah, I will look it up in a second. Taking Flight Chapter 1. <clears throat> so yes, the quote was... The forum that was could no longer s support our ideas. There were so many. Mm -hmm. And uh, that pretty much sums it up. So we we were we felt a little bit restricted in the end by the Joss Whedon universe. So we we strive to make our own uh, quote unquote universe, and that became Space Chaos. <laughs> dot darkbb dot com. Uh, and for the longest time we were there and we brought in a few new people. I think that's when Tahu and Cluster joined us and uh, a few other people came back uh, from the original forum, from SerenityRP.com forums. Um, and, and it was good for a while and everything was cool and we started writing all these mad stories like... Uh, uh, we had something going with the human missile crisis and stuff like that. It's just nonsense, right? A load of nonsense stories, but we were having fun. And mm -hmm. um, one of us struck on the bright idea: is like, oh, why don't we try turning these into a, into books that we can sell? So uh, I started writing Split Personality, uh, which is about Luna and Rogue, and they're sort of they're they're way outside of the Firefly universe. Like it was, it's so far removed from that now that you know we're we're doing our own thing. We've got our own unique characters. We're in our own set universe. Um, but it wasn't really that well thought out. Like all my things were done because of the characters. Ooh. Yeah, keep talking. Keep talking. I wrote stories that were focused on the characters. I didn't really give a whole lot of thought to the world building and stuff like that. So it was like, all right, so these characters end up in this situation. Oh, what situation is this? Oh, they're on, let's say, they're on a planet and they're doing X. They've got to, they've got to capture a ship or something. And that would just be the premise. There wouldn't be any of the, okay, so where is this planet? And what what are the sort of factions that make up this planet? That came much, much later. There it is. Yeah, Split Personality. Yes, so this is a paper copy of Split Personality. Uh, it is, I would say, technically, it is also uh, on Amazon, marked as Split Personality Unedited. And 
anybody curious enough can find it, but uh, it is my professional <laughs> opinion that what what you're getting is essentially a first draft. So yeah. it is by no means a a a finished product. And in fact, we are at this point of the time in our current stage of development. We are actually taking pieces of that material and channeling them into short stories which already have the world thought through behind it and also maybe omitting certain things that don't make sense at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wrote Split Personality and published it on Amazon, self-published it on Amazon and that was like wow I can really do this sort of thing. <laughs> I didn't really understand at the time, the the real endeavour of editing and stuff like that. Like I had got it proofread by a few friends, and they'd given me their feedback. I changed a few things based on their feedback, and then published the book. Right? That was uh, all right. Okay, it's edited, sort of thing. Like that <laughs> was in my mind. Oh, my job, my work here is done. Oh, way. Um, and then it lit. And then literally a few months later, I released Shell Shock, which is the other. Uh, uh, yeah, it. <laughs> we don't sell shell shock anymore. It was awful, and I, it's not even. And it's not a good representation of what we're trying to sell now. Like I'd much rather split personality is closer, but really seekers where it's at. Seekers the where we're setting up the universe and all this and that. Um, the others were just kind of. Hold your horses there. I wouldn't say we're setting up the universe. We are allowing a glimpse into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, whereas with the others, it was just sort of all over the place. And Shell Shock was my attempt at like a dramery sort of big space <laughs> battley thing, and it didn't come off at all. So, yeah, we we're not doing Shell Shock anymore. <laughs> and uh, so after that, um. I don't know what happened after that, really. I think it's sort of all just kind of a blur. I didn't... I... Uh, after that, point one, we there was a, a sort of period when we were all very active on the forum. So we were, mm. we were actually generating a whole bunch of uh, the forum stories, like all the... from Deja Vu up to Murphy Station and all that. And, uh, and on the other hand, we... We had also started to sort of dabble in seeker editing, so that actually took a lot of energy already. Mm. I think you oh. had a bunch of uh, a bunch of works in the pipeline, and that's that's when you hit the point where oh, uh, there's text, but it's it doesn't it it wasn't really what you wanted mm. like you you had some works but uh but those didn't really hit the mark and you kept redoing the same things over and over again and get more frustrated like oh that, <laughs> this doesn't work <laughs> i think uh after after our show shock and while we were sort of fiddling with seeker we i had a stack of like split personality two ideas and black star and just a whole bunch of stuff and a lot of it was I think the hunt as well the detective story I wanted to write and that kind of thing there were there were drafts of that slinging around and yeah it just none of it was working properly none of it was really uh, like ah. I think, uh, I think an, another thing that coincides with that is uh, sorting out uh, some of the uh, some of the so how this universe works part and it was very ap apparent that certain components that were carrying on with this material were not uh, actually working mm. so like okay in in today's where we are today here I, I know that I have the stance that uh, with certain things Yes, we will. We will do our best to not break the, the actual science. And with certain things, we will look look stuff up. 
but uh, ultimately we are not uh, trying to uh, achieve hard sci-fi, sci we are just trying to not make uh, outright stupid claims that can immediately be uh, be loved away. So it's like it's it's more about uh, learning what not to claim. <laughs> but mm -hmm. back then it was full of exactly the sort of uh, uh, I don't know. If I had to bring a comparison, I would say uh, the the water world level stupidity, like claiming that there is enough water on Earth to uh, uh, to cause uh, the levels to rise so that only Mount Everest is out. So we don't we we don't we don't have we don't have that. We don't even have Earth in our stories. But but that's that's the sort of uh, stuff that that we was we were dealing with, like mm -hmm. claims claims that are immediately contradictory not uh, not cl not even claims where you could say that yeah we should research these things before we actually <laughs> put up <laughs> that thing but it was like well this is obviously wrong <laughs> <laughs> and and i think this is an, an important thing right originally i'm going to call it chaos nova mark one a lot of chaos nova mark one was just bah, bah. <laughs> But then, when we started working together, Chaos Nova Mark II sort of started developing, and this is where we started questioning like the world building and how everything works, and setting the boundaries of the sandbox, as as the phrase goes. Uh, and because of that, because we now know some of that stuff, it's easier to write stories that make sense as well. So, yeah, though. I, I think we've come a long way from from AJJE up to where we are now. We've got a better understanding of everything that's going on, and uh, or not everything. We've got a better understanding of some things, a very small yeah, proportion. Yeah, we 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 have a somewhat decent working understanding of certain moving parts mm -hmm. that will allow us to research other things and to maybe dodge yet other things and to maybe uh, decide where we will yep this is this is where we will uh, go on realistic and we know it mm -hmm. where were we what was what was the question again <laughs> uh, the origin story oh yeah so uh, if I scroll the forum again mm, then a, a lot of okay s there's s i think you have lumped uh, certain threads into just one post but basically this this was the the list of posts here was uh was what i found and <laughs> somewhere in that pile uh there were actually certain developments that were kind of interesting and and certain story elements that were kind of interesting and yeah I, I would say that where we're now is that we we are sort of handpicking certain interesting things and trying to assemble them into a uh, a more coherent uh, main story arc I've just checked, if you go to spacechaos.darkbb.com, it actually takes you to the current website, the current forum. Oh. So, so there who you knows? have it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know why that's a thing, but sure. Uh, next question. <clears throat> question for you. What works well for you in terms of collaborating with writing the stories? Do you have roles, or do you both contribute to the writing and editing process? Hmm. Um, I think you put it pretty well the other day uh, when we were talking to Leslie. Like you said, I'm a full-on pantser, and then you sort of take that and we go through it together. Like spice and dice, right? <laughs> so I'll I'll write the nonsense, and if it if if I don't talk myself out of writing it, like you'll ask me questions about it, like the the plot and things like that, and and I'll 
I'll sell it really badly and talk myself out of out of <laughs> advancing with it. Um, but if it passes that criterion, if it if it becomes like Scribe and the Doctor, where like, okay, we're going to work on this story, then we sort of go through it together, work out a bunch of things, and then. I think this time around, with the short stories, you sort of took them on your own and did the slice and dice thing, and that really put things into focus, right? That made it easier to work on, and so, yeah, I come up with the nonsense, we discuss it, and then you come up with a bunch of stuff, I type away as you're talking, and then we sort of bring it all together and make it work, and yeah. I don't know, it's just, it's kind of natural. Well, there is nothing natural about it, I would say. It's it's that just that we have maybe tried certain things that, uh, that didn't work at all. Mm. Like, for example, taking a bunch of text and trying to immediately rewrite it into better text is something that definitely didn't work. Uh, but yeah, uh, Basically, the material that Nox comes up with uh, is usually the sort of material that uh, that that is it, it it is not the complete story. Instead, it is raw material that will then need developmental editing. And even with the good material, that is true. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it's it's just that's 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 what we have found out. <laughs> uh, meanwhile. Uh, I personally, uh, in in my uh, boring civilian life, uh, I am a copywriter. So on one hand, I am used to working with text, uh, sorting out text, text flow, uh, all that. And uh, at the same time, uh, I suck at the two ends of writing process. I suck at coming up. Uh, with stuff from scratch, and I suck at proofreading. So, whatever we do, there there needs to be another pair of eyes who does the proofreading. But uh, but yeah, so far it is. Uh, I think that's that's the best way to put it. That mm -hmm. I'm when I say Nox, I mean I mean Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, so the best way to put it is that uh, Nox comes up with the raw material then some magic happens <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we 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 bash it and smash it and uh, I might destroy it and uh, get it into little pieces and uh, and maybe then examine and say oh so the purpose of this piece is to do that and the purpose of this piece is to do that Oh, but by the way, that purpose can be achieved by also tho those means. So there's there's a, there's a lot of inexplicable messing around, and then uh, a new outline comes through that process, and based on that new outline and and knowing what we uh, what we know from from all that digestion. New material arises. <laughs> Excuse me. It's good. I, re I enjoy it. It's <laughs> uh, they, they, it, it is difficult sometimes when you write a what you think is an awesome story and you you sort of get to the end of the first draft and you hit return and you're like right that's amazing I'm done <laughs> and, you show, and then you show it to someone in this case law and it. it like destruction guaranteed, right? You are going to tear it <laughs> apart, and and it is going to be worked on because you yeah. never, uh, you're never going to write a perfect first draft, right? You're never going to write anything that's just going to come straight out your fingertips and go to the thing. But it is, it is hard sometimes. It does feel a bit like, oh, but I did, I did so well. This is such a good story, you know. But no, when it goes through the law filter um, and comes out the other side, it's actually a much, it's a better story for. When you first write it, it's a good story for you, right? One person enjoys this story, the author. Once it goes through the law filter and comes out the other side, it's safe for human consumption, like safe for public consumption. Like other people can enjoy it then. It's not just like the author's child. Like, oh, this is mine to enjoy and mine alone. 
but uh it's uh I would say that it is similar to like the whole process has been made a whole lot less painful once we learned the concept of first draft like what first mm -hmm. draft actually means and once you learn to accept that what you have written when you first write something is a first draft and uh, the, di the, the relation between first draft is to finish story as uh, first script is to a movie so no. the the first draft is no is no more a story as a, as a script is a movie like there 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 are the the elements that will make that story are in there but how much the reader will actually see in the end that can vary a lot yeah and I think once once I got to terms with that, because it was really hard, like I said, with the dual fight scene, for example, I was like, this is amazing, I've done a fantastic job, and then you tore it to shreds. When I saw the end result of that, I was like, no, this this is this makes more sense. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is this is what we should have like, you know. It's so obvious now, you know, one of those moments. But um once once I saw that, it became a lot easier for me to sort of say, All right, well this is you're gonna have to learn to accept criticism and also first drafts aren't like as crucial as you thought they were <laughs> so uh, yeah and uh, right now we are actually already somewhat uh, in question four territory is that what are the difficulties in the process I remember the fight scene well I, re I remember exactly what my issue was you made a claim that jewel being pushed to her shuttle mm -hmm. by the bad guy will kick will will basically uh, reach reach from yeah. behind him and kick him at the ba in the back of his head and i was like well try try performing it with your body and you will see that that is literally not possible <laughs> I think there, I think there was a massive error there in that I'd written something like this happens an awful lot as well. Like I write something, but I can't get what I'm trying to say down on the page as well, and then it comes out of something else, and then I end up sort of sticking to this other thing, mm -hmm. even though it doesn't make sense. Um, I think what I wanted to do, and what you managed to tease out in the final thing, is she she wheels up against her shuttle, right, and then pushes away, like kick pushes him away, right? Is that you, what happens? You, no, you di uh, you did not have that. Uh, yeah, see, the, but this the, is what I'm saying. I wanted that, but I completely fluffed it and just wrote something, and then I sort of stuck to that, and it was like, mm, but it didn't work. So yeah, in the in the end, she will she is pushed to the shuttle, and she pushes back using that as their as her support. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there was there was some some uh, some limb movement there in the text that was. <laughs> very clearly physically impossible <laughs> yep. and when I pointed it out the <laughs> I got a the, bit huffy <laughs> the, the response was not very receptive mm. so so you could you could say that was a difficulty yeah so so yeah ev everybody's uh, everybody's uh, uh, version what, whatever version you currently have from the recent work process is always precious and when somebody comes after it uh, that is that is always painful so this is this is a difficult part uh, also timing the workflow can sometimes be a challenge it's like when we have the agreed upon uh, work uh, work session time and uh, and if our brains are not quite uh, in with the schedule, or 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 let's say, so sometimes it's like we're both like, today is no brain day, <laughs> but yeah. sometimes it is also a matter of where we are in very different places emotionally, and and also not 
recognizing when it is actually better to spend some time alone with the text. So for example, sometimes when I when I work certain wordings out or when I when I basically know what needs to be said, but I haven't worked out the wording or I haven't worked out the the expression of it and I'm I'm actually working on something uh, very specific and I'm fully immersed in that uh, then uh, an interruption can destroy that moment and uh, and and that in itself can be very very destructive to the process uh, so it's, yeah. it's like it's, it's it's not just creatively destructive it's also emotionally very very destructive so uh, sometimes we we have uh, uh, we have actually cut uh, sessions short because uh, we, we ran into something like this mm -hmm. what else <laughs> I think one of the difficulties comes from the fact that I don't really think before I speak. <laughs> I just sort of brain mouth go, you know, and, and that, that leads to some problems sometimes. But I mean, I think I'm reining it in. I think I'm learning to. <laughs> yeah, think I think a I bit. think like on on a good day when we're both rested, when we're both aware of our processes, we're able to keep things in check and like, oh, okay, I I understand that this is now happening. Uh, I will give a warning and say, yeah, I will now. Uh, I I will I will now put a blanket over my head and work <laughs> this thing out, and when I and and I will tell you when I emerge and the thing's ready. But sometimes I'm not uh, aware of the mindset myself, and then it's like. <laughs> <laughs> there are some times where you be working on something, and I I know. I, I've, I think I know now because even the background noise, sometimes you hear like a little like dusting in the background. Even that goes <laughs> quiet, right? When you're working on stuff. I'm like, no, I'm going to shut the F up right now. This is not, I'm out. <laughs> you know. It's like, it's like if I, if I had crickets in my room, this would be the moment when the crickets uh, stop chirping. It's like, yeah. <laughs> the dead silence. <laughs> Deadly silence. The editor is working. <laughs> <laughs> no noise, nothing. <laughs> so yeah, but then then there I do this other annoying thing where you'll be working on like text, and I'll and you you'll be like hammering away and you'll get something there and then I'll say something like, uh, oh did you mean to say X instead? And then you'll be like, no, this isn't what we're doing with this. This is this is just text level stuff. We're not we're not doing the main yeah, thing. Yeah, this is like. Uh, when I some, sometimes when I get uh, a sort of vision or slice of uh, how the scene flows, even though I don't have all words, I will like. So person X will do that with a do that with something something, uh, and then insert uh, reference here does da 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 with something something insert that here. So I will literally type things out uh, with the placeholder after placeholder. And uh, and that is not the place to work on wording. <laughs> it's like uh, it is similar to the I know uh, I know what I'm getting out thing, except in this case it is not uh, the wording that is coming out, but it is the shape of the uh, of the text that's coming out. So the, these are these are two very well known <laughs> danger zone moments. Uh, and I'll be like, "Oh, have you tried saying the doodad?" And so that, and that that's just <laughs> like, like an end moment right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, what other challenges have we faced? Oh, I I can. I can think of one. It's like uh, we have been uh, working together quite long already, and I mean we don't always realize that. But I, I would, I, I guess that there is, there, there is the certain natural pace, or like we're, we're kind of able to fall into each other's steps, or like it's, the, it's, it's, it's the body cup thing. <laughs> And uh, and this can actually sometimes make it more difficult to uh, to discuss things externally, 
for example, when trying to bring in another co-author into a discussion or where in, I don't know, uh, even having uh, three-way talks on uh, on some storylines or, or, or coming up with new things. It's like we are so used to uh, how things work for us that it is on one hand not so easy to um, uh, not so easy to try a different way and on the other hand it is so easy to start expecting that insta comprehension from uh, from from a third person who are who have no <laughs> idea what, <laughs> what, what we want from them <laughs> yeah that's happened a few times oh a couple of times at least and uh, what you said about uh, when you write something out loud this is my expression right write, writing things out loud <laughs> uh, then you know what your words mean but the person reading them doesn't know what you're thinking mm -hmm. so it, it's like mm, I'm thinking of an example oh yeah we had the uh, we had the line in the book uh, that says that that's like a a very grazing uh uh very grazing uh, sort of basically a hand wave about uh, that uh, paints a very quick sketch about uh uh about the state of colonization in this one particular system so it was like yes this planet was about to be full scale colonized but there were some non so not so optimal things or there were some some irritations and the and the sentence says and with the more human optimal uh Chalasi free so close the whole endeavor fell out of fashion and uh one of our friends read that and and went launched into a long tirade about uh about some spe special conditions, what we would do, what we would have to take into account uh, for two planets to be close together, but that's not what we meant. What we meant at all. <laughs> it was like close, like Earth and Venus are close, so like different scale. But uh, but he picked up on that one word and immediately thought that we were claiming what we were not at all claiming. <laughs> So that that's that sort of stuff uh, happens sometimes, and it's like, yeah. how can you, how can you not see? <laughs> but then, <laughs> but then uh, it's uh, yeah. I, I would I would say that this is a wider difficulty, not being able to uh, always see things with the reader's eyes. Like when you, especially when we have worked uh, with some material longer, it is it is pretty impossible to. Uh, to have a more distant perspective. So we 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 know uh, the Curse of the Universe. We know one another's work processes, and it's and it's unfair uh, to anybody who we who we like the third person to just expect them to know all that. But we yeah, we kind yeah. of do a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So that yeah that that's one of the problems. But I mean we're aware of it and. Yeah, so it's like even even if we're aware of it, we're not always able to counter it well enough. So there is there is that. Um, and I think that one of the other difficulties is that um, we need to know. Uh, this touches on the point you said earlier about how when we know when to call a work session early. Mm -hmm. I think another element of that is you need to know when to relax as well. Like we sometimes go off and play. I think this has only happened a couple of times. But we sometimes just go off and play games, like mm. Killing Floor, for example, just to unwind and 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 you know. So we're yeah. not not every time we meet one another on Skype or whatever, it's not always work because we're friends, right? There's, yeah. There, there. there used to be. Back in the day, there used to be long sessions of bashing zombies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I think let's, uh, as far as far as the chat goes, let me uh, guide us uh, to uh, the next 
bundle of topics how we uh, so how how do we manage <laughs> or what do <laughs> what we do to either counter those difficulties or or like make things work mm. uh, so yeah uh, games are important <laughs> uh, back in the day and I I would say this was before I was more active in the forums so so it's like when now that we're more active in the direct work we're not as actively playing anymore mm. even even though even though we do have uh, late some late night uh, play sessions sometimes they are not uh, as frequent as as they are in some other points and of course sometimes it sometimes uh, there is this time when it's like yep work doesn't work today let's let's just let's kill, go kill some zombies <laughs> <laughs> it's important to take down time mm -hmm. definitely uh, what are you playing right now what am I playing right now uh, I think just Fallout 4 just stuck in the background you know occasionally I'm like oh I want to get back into recording it again, and I've got some plans. But I, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe the maybe the new year. Um, I I, like, I looked I looked at your channel. I think the last uh, gameplay video that you have put up is like a year ago. Was it not in Was it not in May? Well, oh. that's, that's close. Yeah, uh, we're we're in December now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so I'd like to get back into the only problem is I I made the rather silly mistake of having a female protagonist because it's a it's a role playing game right if I want to put a voice into into Jasmine's like if I want to say stuff with her and cut out the fallout stuff that's already there I can't do it because then Jasmine's got like this this voice basically my voice and it doesn't really so um Gonna replace her with a male character and continue the story on from there. And then when it comes to like dialogue and conversations, I can be like, oh, brah, 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 in my voice and not worry about okay. it. Too specific. Yeah, I figured it might be. Sorry, but yeah. yeah. This this does this does not connect with anything right now. I, instead, let me tell me let me tell all about what I'm playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, right now. Uh, Lost Alpha Developers Cut is about to come out with the new build, I think, which is going public. So it's all the testing right now, and I think uh, either today or tomorrow uh, the potentially final build will come up, which means I will be uh, work playing a lot. <laughs> also, uh, Wasteland 2. A, lo a lot of Wasteland 2. I've been uh, recording a whole bunch of episodes lately and uh, uh, I haven't even uploaded half of them. I think I have like, <laughs> at least 20 episodes in still waiting to be uploaded. Uh... You've been playing Wasteland 2 for a while now. The game's lasted long. Oh yeah. I mean, some of, some of it is my own doing because I, I like to meander in the game <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a massive game as well yeah. like it's huge yeah. the sky of it's massive I also played something shorter recently like I, I usually usually have like a few long games going on like usually something from the stalker variety and something from the uh, from the fallout wasteland all that uh, variety uh, oh, Lifeless Planet was another one that uh, that I played recently, and I think that's it. They recently added a whole bunch of new ships to Eve, like for the free account players, like cruisers and stuff like that. And uh, th this, this, okay, going back to the origin story real quick. Eve and Red Dwarf and all the stuff like that was the stuff that I grew up with that got me into sci-fi and that kind mm. of thing. So, 
Uh, I mean, now that Eve's free and they're bringing out all the awesome ships, I, the temptation becomes too great. Uh, but I haven't got the time. This is the thing, right? Games take up a lot of my time, uh, and that's time I could be using writing. And as fun as Eve is, uh, it's 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 better for me to just play Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4 uh, than it is for me to get involved in Eve again. Because at least with those games, I can sort of get to a point right. Oh, okay, I've done this thing. Uh, I can save it now and go off and you know write a story. Whereas with Eve, it's like oh, I've got to get to the space station. I've got to set all my skills up and everything. It's a bigger it's a bigger deal than it is just picking up a game, playing it for a little bit, putting it down again, and then getting it's on with life. It's a long term commitment. Oh yeah, commitment is definitely the right word when it comes to Eve. So, <laughs> but oh, it's so awesome! Such a great game, but I haven't been playing it, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> Yeah, just just fall out. I, um, I've got another project sort of on the side called Outrunners, which is like my take on the post-apocalyptic deal, but it's sort of set in the UK. Uh, and so I, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the games we play kind of influence me a little bit as well. Mm. Like I, I, fair enough. I haven't done like we play a lot of Killing Floor together, but I haven't done any zombie stories. But I don't really that genre doesn't really interest me. But you know, Fallout leads on to Outrunners, or is, it inspires Outrunners. Uh, so yeah, it, it all links. Yeah. Uh, so before we wrap up, I would also point out uh, certain reference points that are in Seeker. So on one hand, uh, a lot of I, I think more than we realize our thinking is probably influenced by the games we play but I can point out a few certain things uh, in Seeker that are directly uh, influenced by the games we play so in uh, the last chapter uh, there is this whole we landed here uh, we went from person to person collecting pieces of coordinates that led us to a place where we need to find an entryway to a dungeon essentially we need to go get through uh, we need to get through the gate or through the hidden door uh, to enter the dungeon we need to navigate the dungeon to get into the uh, quest room and there we need to interact with people and uh, uh, this is this is something where I had uh, I had had difficulties getting the getting the events into sequence and then uh, I played some uh, Neverwinter Nights 2 uh, Storm of the Here which has a lot of dungeon crawling in it and uh, and it sort of clicked at some point like it was all all of the adventuring part of logic that went in there, so that's that's one uh, very clear game thing. And uh, another thing is that we have a few uh, New Vegas uh, references, like deliberate and, and direct references in Seeker, or anybody who can find them. <laughs> and speaking of references, there are also uh, two somewhat obscure. Uh, references to the show Killjoys, uh, which uh, uh, which has uh, several uh, tropes that Seeker also uses. It's just we we're using them in a different way. But uh, in a recent uh, chat, uh, we discussed it, so that's why I'm bringing it out. Like, any if if anybody cares to find them, <laughs> this is this is your challenge. <laughs> And uh, you, you, we were writing Seeker, and I think you had some concerns that there were some like similarities to Killjoys, but I'd never seen it, and I mm -hmm. wasn't allowed to see it yep. until we'd got to a certain point in the book. So, yep. uh, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I uh, I think it was. It must have been 2000, 2015 because I was staying in the countryside, and that's when we were already actively working on the second draft and somewhere in that point uh, I saw Killjoys and I was like well fuck there are, <laughs> there, 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 there are, there are some, some very defined similarities so I, <laughs> I was like yep there is this show 
It is a good show. <laughs> you should see it, but you must not watch it until we are through with certain things. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I would like to end this here because uh, I'm feeling the urge to ramble. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, me that's, too. <laughs> that is never a good sign. We can we can carry on in our own post chat chat. Yeah. But uh, answers for Rebecca. Wrap up here. Go read her blog. Go read her uh, author interviews and uh, and book reviews. I read everyone. I. I I can I can say for myself, uh, I keep up with the uh, updates in Twitter and uh, and I always read them. I even uh, I even scored a a paperback book uh, from a recent uh, giveaway. <laughs> so so there is that. Very anyway, cool. read Rebecca's blog, and uh, we thank you for watching. And we shall see you another time. See you soon. Bye. Bye.